Yo, what is going on? It is your good, it is your good buddy Sam. And uh, I mean, first of all, I got to address the elephant in the room. You know, no video since April. What happened? Well, obviously, after that last video, I got sucked into the hyper competitive, super commercial, fast paced world of, you know, top tier spreadsheet based music making. I was playing all the shows, all the venues, all around the world, making music, spreading sheets. And, you know, it's one of those lifestyles that's really exciting as long as you can sustain it. But eventually, the drugs, the anonymous sex, the staying up all night, it catches up with you. And I'll tell you something, um, it's its so easy when you start playing with Microsoft Excel to think that's where you're going to want to be your whole life. And then you find out, you know what, I'm just going to come back to a nice, boring, everyday office program like Ableton Live and make something like this new Max for Live device called Tiramisu that I've been working on with my uh, new friend and co-conspirator Marshall McGee and another friend of mine, uh, Alex Van Gills. And what this device does, very simply, it does layering. And it lets you use layering um, in kind of creative and creative and unexpected ways to make new and interesting sounds. This is inspired by Marshall, really, who um, another phenomenal YouTube video maker person uh, who does a lot of cool sound design videos. I will put a link in the description or something to his uh, work. And what this, the idea is you, uh, often when you're doing sound design for movies and games and this kind of thing, you take sounds, you layer them, and you play with uh, how they line up with each other, their relative pitch and uh, their relative amplitudes and their filter characteristics. And you can end up with some sounds that um, you play around with them until you get a sound you really like. And Tiramisu tries to automate a bunch of that. And I'll let um, Marshall talk about the sound design. I'll just kind of show you what it does. And then I want to open it up and kind of look at the guts a little bit. So the idea would be you have, for example, a whole bunch of um, hats or something could load these up and then every time you push play it picks a different uh, chunk of six to play back and it plays them back with right now it's using always the same uh, start offset the same delay the same filter volume and pitch but you can play with you can play with all those you could say uh, let the pitch go down by up to two octaves. You can offset the start to smooth out or to, to mess with the attacks a little bit. A little bit of delay lets you smear that first transient. If you crank it up, you get staggered onsets and then maybe really staggered onsets. almost like a drum roll or something. There's a lot of stuff in there um, that you can play around with. One thing that's cool is if you find one you really like, um, let's, uh, let me just drop this. Maybe you really like this one. Uh, no, it's a little thin. Maybe you really like this one. I doubt you really like that one. Maybe you really like this sound right here. And you want that to be kind of the, the soul of the sound and randomize stuff around it. Uh, you can lock that and then drop the volume down a few decibels. And now when every, time, every time you push play, uh, sorry, if you turn on, turn on randomization, you can kind of hear how that sample is still there and is still most prominent. And the other ones kind of give it some Variety. And then uh, Tiramisu, the way it works, any MIDI note that it gets triggers playback, no matter which MIDI note it is, it doesn't affect the pitch or anything. Uh, so you can use that to, you know, sequence it. Maybe add some other drums. Uh, it sounds a little goofy, but uh, anyway, yeah, you can play around with it and maybe use it uh, in the context of a sequence or somehow. So let's crack it open. Let's look inside. Um, the things that I wanted to look at in this Tiramisu object slash uh, Max for Live device. The first one, um, so yeah, there's this um, uh, drop area here. You drop samples there and it reads them into a poly buffer. Um, poly buffer is such a nice object. It lets you hold, you can see here this like, uh, this read folder message that goes to polybuffer will read in a whole new uh, 
folder full of samples. You can also use a pen to append the samples one at a time. And then polybuffer lets you hold basically as many buffers as you want or as much as uh, Max can get in program memory. Um, and yeah, the thing that too that's nice about it is just like buffer you can use. So here's one polybuffer and here's the same. These are referencing the same polybuffer because they have the same name. And then this chunk over here, this is kind of, so I, I kind of, maybe because I've spent so much of my time and life programming, but I really always think about patches in terms of, um, oftentimes in terms of calling functions. And so I use sends and receives a lot to kind of say, okay, now I'm calling into a function that does randomization and then sending back the result somehow. Not exactly, but that's the idea. Um, and so being able to have one polybuffer, to have the, the polybuffer over here and also talked about the same polybuffer in the context of this quote unquote function is really nice. And this is something that this, this here that randomizes the um, samples that are actually played back uses sprintf uh, with the name of the polybuffer and then just a number, so dot some number at the end. And that lets you pick a particular sub buffer, child buffer, row of poly buffer um, to actually use as the one that you'll, you'll be playing back. Um, and then there's functions over here for delay, start time, output volume, low pass, and all these are really doing is taking a range, computing random numbers in that range, and then spitting out the result to, to go to each one of these different, um, each one of these different poly, oh, sorry, each one of these different sort of subunits samplers for playback. Uh, over here, there's some mute and solo logic that's kind of cute. The idea being uh, there's these mute and solo logic sub patches over here, the solo, solo logic one. Um, anytime you push the mute button on a particular sample for a particular, um, yeah, sample, it comes in here and gets stored in this POC object that keeps track of which one of the which one of the uh, samplers is is soloed or not, and then that all gets sent to the mute solo sub patcher, which looks like this, and this implements the easy to understand but difficult to describe logic of mute and solo, which is basically if a sampler is always, always, always enable a sampler if it's soloed. If it's not soloed, then enable it if no other track is soloed, unless the track is also not enabled. Um, so that is saying in words what this logical nonsense is doing over here. Um, as is often the case with computers, easy to, well, easy to, Easy to know, difficult to describe, I guess. Uh, and then each one of these is, there's six of these um, samplers that actually do the playback. These are all B patches, and if you pop one of these open, you can see what these are doing. Um, again, you know, I tend to make these patches where everything is super spread out, but it's nothing too complicated going on over here. This is just routing all the different messages that can come into this object, setting the buffer, of course, sets the buffer, and that um, critically sets the uh, waveform tilde, which buffer it refers to, which is used for drawing, of course. Um, there's something here to dim the B patcher by overlaying it with gray if the sampler isn't enabled. And then this is actually doing the audio. Uh, of course, there's a groove object here, sends out its current position to be used to draw the playback indicator line over top of the sampler. And then there's a stereo, um, there's one filter here. It's the same filter for each channel. Would love in a future version to add a bit of spread for some uh, stereo spread and a little, of a little um, variety there or, or more something. Uh, the metal loss for the sound design words, but stereo spread because it sounds cool. Um, this could have been done with MC, but I didn't do it with MC because, you know, um, just being lazy, then there's a delay for the left and right channel, and um, you know nothing too fancy. Just uh, some pretty simple, uh, a pretty simple DSP chain, honestly. And then you have the same exact thing duplicated over here. Um, why is it duplicated if each one of these can only play back one sample at a time? Well, it's because when you're playing back a sample when you get to the end of sample playback, so say a sample is playing and you wanna re-trigger it, you have to take the um, sample and move the playhead back to zero, basically. And if you do that while the sample is playing, you'll get a jump and cause a discontinuity and a click. So what you actually have to do is uh, ramp the sample down to zero while triggering it again. 
So you need two voices to do that. And in this case, I'm doing it with two groove objects and they kind of take turns being the main or, or dominant or leader groove or whatever you want to call it. Um, this could be done much better with the poly tilde object. Uh, I realized that basically as soon as I finished working on this. So in a future version, I'll probably add that in. That has a number of nice benefits. Number one, it's just way simpler. And number two, uh, you can use mute to save some CPU when a particular voice isn't playing. Uh, so that's most of what I wanted to show you inside here. I hope it's useful to, you know, be able to go in one of these and kind of see what's going on. It's not a super complex patcher and maybe a good way to kind of, I don't know, get into um, doing some simple, this, I mean, what am I saying? There's a ton of great Max for Live devices out there that you can dive into, but that's how this one works. And uh, maybe something in there will be useful to you. So enjoy. I hope this is a fun AMXD to play around with. And again, definitely uh, check out Marshall's video. I'll put it in the description or something where he talks about some of the sound design you can do with this object and a bit more about uh, what inspired it in the first place. So thanks for watching. And I promise pinky swear uh, that I will have some more fun Max tutorials for you soon. Take care and I'll see you soon.